Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Patrick from Tested and Tech Thing. And thanks for coming in, Patrick. Today we're gonna geek out about keyboards. This is why I can't have nice things. Oh my goodness, <laughs> what did you do? Okay, so we started talking about keyboards, these, these luxury keyboards, these high-end gaming keyboards, like $160, $180, right? All of these have stylish LEDs underneath the keys. They're all using like Cherry MX keys. Um, you know, well, for, only one of them, Only actually. one of them, pardon me. That's right. Well, uh, well we're talking about mechanical keyboards today. Mechanical keyboards. Yeah, and in the world, world of high-end gaming keyboards, you can spend over $150 on a keyboard. Yes. And a lot of people build their own keyboards. We know there's a dedicated mechanical keyboard community out there. They get their own circuit boards, they solder their own keys in, yeah. they bu you buy their own keycaps. But for someone who just wants to type and then play games, what's the difference? Uh, the feel, the tactile sensation. Mm. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna try to explain a little bit of today. What is the difference when you look at keyboards from a different, bunch of different companies? Uh, but we can start off with the non-mechanical keyboard. So what do you got right there? This is a membrane keyboard. This is what the vast majority of keyboards sold with desktops are. Um, keys. Yep. Musical instruments. Oh, nice. Getting my maker on. I'm take it to the Maker Fair in a few weeks. Um, and, oh, look at that. There's little humps you press and they make a contact. Yeah. And literally, this is cheap, uh, this is good enough, this can be actually pretty good. If you work in an office, there's a 99% probability that this is what your keyboard looks on the inside. That's right. Um, or something, you know, some variation on this theme where there's basically a membrane that gets pressed down, it makes a contact, and you get a key entry on your screen. So the difference between a mechanical keyboard it is that there's actual mechanical switches yes. on the inside for every single key. Uh, now, last year, Will and I did a project where we built our own mechanical <laughs> keyboards, and in that, we got this keyboard, uh, this key sampler. Uh, this one uh, is a sampler of all the range of Cherry keys. I'm laughing because that's when you guys introduced me to Mass Drop, which yeah. I basically had to kill all the emails from because it's like, spend money with us this week on another shiny thing. And as you can see, if you pop open the keycap, mm -hmm. you know, this is the switch. Right. Right. There's a switch under every key, and the switches, the different color switches denote uh, the different feels. So the, the reds, different, right. the blues, the, the different greens. actuation points, how much weight needs to be put down. You know, when we're talking about mechanical keys, um, what are those qualifiers you, you, that define the clickiness, the quote unquote clickiness, and the feel. Well, one of the interesting things about, so this is, uh, I'm really sorry Corsair, but I was trying to find all the screws and I've only found 12 so far. Um, this is their K70, their new uh, Cherry Red Rapid Fire, the K70 Rapid Fire RGB. And the big thing with this one is they're claiming it's a 1.2 millimeter distance to actuate the entry on the key, which is like 0.7 millimeter to 0.8 millimeter less than a typical mechanical key with the idea that if you are a Counter-Strike maven, you've got, you know, you're, you're not quite traveling half the distance to, to make your entry on the keyboard, but really, really close to it. Right, there's a ratio between like the distance mm -hmm. your key has tra your finger has to travel right. on the key to activate it, how, and, and also uh, where that is when you start getting resistance, and how much actual resistance you're getting, and then when it clicks back, how right. fast that clicks back to the reset point so that you can press the key again quickly. It's crazy, so for like an old school IBM Model M keyboard, this is a buckling spring keyboard, and this is where the really distinctive, insane mechanical sound comes from. Ooh. This is the thing that nearly caused my wife to murder me the first couple years we were married, because I was writing like 2,000 words a day on one of these. But that is like two to two and a half millimeters of travel um, total on the key itself, and that noise is really brutal, but people love the way these keys feel for typing. I mean, you, could, you can buy these refurbished for $180. Uh, wow. Unicomp makes them for like $85 new. And this is the creme de la creme of like 1984 for technology. Yeah, like 30 um, years old. And 30 year old technologies, it's, it still works great for typing, but I think what's happening today is a lot of companies who make gaming keyboards, right. they want to design their keys, even though they're using manufacturers like Cherry, in the case of Corsair, right. they want to develop key, uh, switches for gamers. Yes, it's what's a different crazy need. is one of the Counter-Strike players in my old office tried to steal this keyboard three different times oh, really? because he thought it was the keyboard for that for him on that game. But so they're they're going for um, you know basically how many you know 
one of the things they started doing was eliminating the distinctive clicking sound, mm -hmm. right? Um, the amount, the, the, the gram weight it takes to actuate a key. Most of them of these days are around 40, 45 grams? Between 45 and 50 yeah. grams. Um, the key travel is down to like 1.9 for I think the majority of the keys. And there's kind of the sensation of how stiff it feels under your finger. Yeah. Um, the resistance, like the green. How much wobbliness. This is basically really, really close to the classic. Uh, the green is really, really close to a classic IBM Model M. It is you know, it's it's like the weightlifter's key. There's a lot of, it feels like a lot of travel. It makes a very, very distinct noise. Uh, and there's a definite resistance. You can feel the resistance. And most of the rest of these keys are very, very soft. Although this one's got a fair amount of noise to it. What's that running? Yeah, so let's talk about the actual, okay. the modern day keyboards, right? The Corsair is actually, Corsair is, I think, the only gaming company out there now that has a partnership with Cherry. Right. And even though they, they aren't using the exact same Cherry keys that have been manufacturing over 20 years, they developed a new type of key, uh, yeah. a switch. These are the, for... the Cherry MX Speed RGB keys, which are mm -hmm. basically like a red, but should be a little bit faster because of that reduced travel. And, and also course, have RGB LEDs under each key. Yes. Then you can, of course, program. Um, but outside of the Cherry world, well, let's look at Razer, for example. Razer uh, stopped using Cherries on their Black Widow keyboards, I think in 2014. Okay. And I think Cherry, the, the patent for the Cherry switch mm -hmm. um, expired. So there were Chinese companies coming up that basically designed a key switch that looked almost ex or, and functioned almost right. exactly like a Cherry key key switch. So I can take this off right here, and you can tell it has the almost distinct, the same crossbar stem as you would um, a cherry switch. Uh, the LEDs are in a different place, mm -hmm. and then the keycaps, I believe, are even interchangeable with the cherry, um, cherry keycaps. Uh, what's different, of course, with the Corsair switches is uh, they reduce the travel a little bit, of the, the height of the stem by, I believe, point, uh, 0.3 millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit less travel, and then they have two colors. They have a green one, which is their clicky version, that's right. this, and an, an orange one, which is their silent version. Do now you, there, yep. No, go ahead. Uh, there was some concern in keyboard enthusiasts about the reliability because you know Cherry key switches are made in Germany and right. some other ones are made in China. I think it's for the vast majority of people, it's going to be the same. Uh, Razer actually manufactures their own key switches today, and so they have own, their own quality control. Right. And these will all survive for you know tens of millions of presses. Something has to go pretty horribly wrong. So for a company like Razer. They're not going to screw around with their reputation by producing something. They aren't so desperate to separate from Cherry that they're going to screw up their reputation with the gaming community. I, I maybe you know. And there are people who who nitpick a little bit, and you can like dive into sure. your, the material science. Are the plastics exactly the same? You know, do the cherries have gold plating on the contacts, right. and and um, the razors don't? But in the actual day to day feel, um, overall, I mean, you might, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. get a more reliable keyboard if you use a, a cherry switch. But the razor ones have functioned right. excellent for me. Yeah, I, they, 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 I haven't heard anybody complaining about them. They have been falling apart. Um, the truth is, is, is keyboards should be a relatively known technology. And I'm, I'm, you know, whether you're talking about Corsair, Logitech, or Razer, they are all looking to figure out reasons to get gamers to upgrade because these are expensive pieces of hardware. Right, and if you um, buy an IBM keyboard that's gonna last you 30 years, and yeah. you spend that, it wasn't $180 back then, it's $180 <laughs> now, you know, people want to buy a keyboard to last them several yes. years. And that's that's supposed to be, that's that's the goal. That's, that's very reasonable. Um, I don't think that you should be upgrading your keyboard, you know, until you build a new, another computer or you're buying a new computer. Well, I mean, this keyboard has lasted me through this this IBM Model M, which the the the, the controller board finally died for it. And I'm ordering a replacement controller board because hey, I, <laughs> let's give a shout out to iFixit and repairing things. Um, I've been using that keyboard for 18 years. It is. See, 93 to 2003, it's 23 years old. I've had wow. it for 18 years. I'm the second owner. Um, none of the keys have died. Uh, I, you know, I finally did something horrible with it, pulling it out of an active PC that, that sparked the board. But you know, I find a lot of people, especially really serious gamers, they often keep their, P, their keyboard across two or three PC builds or refreshes. Totally. Um, it was interesting. We, got a, we did a $400 PC build a, a couple years ago in a show I used to do. And you know, the, the audience was split. They're like, you didn't include the cost of a keyboard in the in your build. It's not a true four hundred dollar PC build, and everybody else was like, 
who buys a new you know keyboard? Like all new PCs pretty much come with keyboards, so they run out of the box. But monitors and keyboards can last for years if you buy a quality one. Yeah. So what's interesting from a technology standpoint is companies that try to re reinvent. The right. keyboard switch and why would they do so? And Logitech actually has done that with their an attempt to do that uh, with their mechanical keyboard. So this is Logitech's G810, and Logitech doesn't use Cherry keyboards mm -hmm. or even a Cherry based design. They call their key switch uh, Romer G. Romer G. Uh, Romer G. And I'll pull off the keycap here to show you the switch. Um, and tell me what, what's the immediate difference that you notice? There's no plus. There's like, no stem. Thingy. That's right. That that's stem that comes there. off mm -hmm. on, on your cherry style uh, key switches, it's actually a ring around the spring. So instead of coming up the middle, it goes around and that lets you open the center for the LED light. Now they claim this allows for better light distribution across your keys um, and a more even feel. Of course, it also means, as you're showing right now, right. you can't interchange the keycaps because that's the Logitech one and that's your Cherry yeah. one. Pretty much all the custom keys out there are designed to work with Cherries. Uh, I mean, that was interesting when, when Corsair was presenting the, the Rapid Fire, one of the things they said is, is they redesigned the keys, used white plastic on the inside just to make sure more light was reflected from the LED down mm. on the keyboard, so the keyboard appeared brighter. Um, and it's pretty much clear plastic on this. I mean, how do you feel, you know, do you feel a difference? Because I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't, you know, I'm not, I, you know, I pick this up, I'm like, it feels great, love the controls, you know, the volume knob may be my favorite part about it, the LEDs are fun. But it's not going to take me from being a mediocre Counter Strike player to being, you know, that much less of a mediocre Counter Strike player. I think on the higher end, you got to really evaluate how much you do gaming versus mm -hmm. uh, typing. Right. And I think for most people, they're still, for the vast majority of time, they're doing typing on right. their keyboards, unless you have multiple keyboards on a computer. Um, and so you choose a keyboard that works best for you for, mm -hmm. for the, the thing you're going to do most with it. And right. for me, that's typing. And I, like I said, I like the feel of mm -hmm. your, uh, the, the Cherry MX, the, the brown switches. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the Romer G switches, mm -hmm. they are quieter. Um, they don't aren't they don't have that actuating sound, that clicky sound, um, but they've been pretty good for me. I definitely love a clicky keyboard. I find that pretty much all of the gaming keyboards, I'm a touch typist on a good day, I can hit 80, 90 words per minute, probably 80 these days. Um, I do find that a, uh, I can type much more efficiently or at least faster uh, on any of the Cherry and or other high-end keyboards. Again, I spend a lot of time with the buckling spring. Um, you know, if you're not spending a lot of time gaming, I, I wouldn't spend $180 on a keyboard, but I wouldn't necessarily keep using, you know, the $2 keyboard that came with your computer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, you know, make the jump to mechanical keyboards. Uh, I think there's there's a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. And there are also the features like, you know, your volume bar, right. your, your extra USB ports, well, things I like mean, that. They're kind of fancy bordering on ridiculous, right? All three of these have braided covers on the That's cables. Right. This one is particularly magnificently thick because they're running two USB cables through them. They all have heft to them. They all have, compli you know, this one has, you know, four feet so you can raise it up high you can tilt it in the direction you want. The build quality on all of these is fantastic. Um, I mean, literally, like, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, I think 18 screws out so far, and I still haven't gotten enough screws out to unbolt the aluminum plate that all the keys are mounted to to get outside of this, or yeah. the aluminum plate that supports the keys before they go into the PCB. You know, it speaks to how known a qual uh, quantity keyboard mm -hmm. switches are and the feel of keyboard switches are, in that the newest models of these keyboards are adding features that are all mostly software-based. The RGB right. LEDs, you, know, you install your desktop software that lets you change the lights so that for a g specific game, certain lights will pop up. Right. for the shortcuts. And to be fair, for complicated, for flight simulators, mm -hmm. or even for other, you know, our action games like right. GTA, you know, knowing where the shortcut keys are, knowing that having <laughs> the lights change up when you get into a different vehicle, that's useful, but these are all software things. Yeah, I mean, I will say also the Q software for the Corsair has gotten much better. When the when the RGB keyboards came out, the Q software was kind of, I'll say it, miserable. Uh, it feels a lot better, and there's a lot more presets, which can be fun. Or you can just do, like I've seen a couple of these in offices where they're just constantly doing the rainbow swirl. Yeah, right no, across that's, the... <laughs> that's, that, that means they bought the keyboard, they plugged it in, and they never installed the software. That's just the default. And they got a great big exhaust that goes on the back of their car. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because of humor. So that's that's like the state of mechanical keyboards, mm -hmm. consumer mechanical keyboards that you can buy, you know, in stores today. Um, I think the most important thing: figure out what type of switch, what type yes. of feel you like. Uh, it's not all created equal. You know, there is a range, and get something like this. Yeah. Get 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 a sampler. Samplers are really, really good. A lot of the big box stores, like Best Buy, still has a lot of the keyboards out there. Get your fingers on them. If you have a friend that has a keyboard, if you're a gamer, you got a friend that has a keyboard, ask if you can borrow their keyboard for a few rounds of whatever and see how it feels. I agree. Like, you know, I, I, I like the keyboard samplers. If you can get your, your hands on a full keyboard, that can make a huge difference. I and think. find the switch that works best for what you're going to be doing most on your computers. Just so, the loudest switch. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the Patrick Norton way of doing things. And to find out more about what you've been doing these days, uh, you go to techthing.com. Yes, please. Techthing.com or youtube.com slash techthing. And tested, of course, yes. is tested.com. Please check us out. And also let us know what keyboards you've been using for the past 20 years also. We'd love to hear it in the comments <laughs> below. But until then, Patrick and I will see you next time.